Hi. Our today's topic is linear regression. Uh, this is a mathematical model that uh, is originally from mathematical statistics and now it is uh, used in machine learning to predict unknown uh, numerical features. So this is a very popular model. So what is the problem we are solving here? Let's say that you have two numerical variables, x and y, and you have observations on x and y, and the result of these observations looks like this. So you have, let's say that you, you choose 200 random people and you measured the weight and the height of each person and um, each point, every point on this graph corresponds to a person. So it's x is weight and y is height, for example. And you see that there is a dependence. Uh, there is a statistical dependence uh, between x and y. Uh, so this, this graph shows you that obviously there is a dependence as this cloud of points is not symmetrical. So you see that uh, these points are situated along some curve. So this means that there is a dependence. And you say, so as there is a dependence between X and Y, uh, then this means that I can predict Y when I know X. So it is possible to, to predict y when x is given. Maybe not, uh, not absolutely correct, but we can make a kind of a prediction that, that we can apply then. Uh, so we can find expected um, uh, range, maybe a range of expected values of y or uh, approximate value of y that uh, is expected when the x is given equal to a given value. So we want, this means mathematically, that we want to get a function. So we want a function such that y is equal f of x and we will use this function to predict y when x is given. And so we want to use these observation, these data, to find this function. Maybe not to find, it's better to say to construct this function that will help us to predict y. So the first question is what type of function we are going to use. And the answer is that the best choice is a polynomial. Because uh, we know that all uh, all mm, continuous functions can be approximated with a polynomial. For example, you know that uh, every uh, continuous function is a sum of some um, a Taylor series and partial sum of a Taylor series is a polynomial. So that is why a polynomial is a good choice. And so the graph of this polynomial will look like, for example, like a, a purple line or like a red line, a red curve. Uh, so we want to find a, a function, a polynomial, such that its graph will be close to the points we observed. Close somehow. So so we, we want to get something, some polynomial with its graph uh, be similar to, to a purple curve or to a red curve. So the question is, so how we can do this? So how we can, we, we, we can find uh, coefficients of this polynomial? So here we see that theta, theta zero, theta m are coefficients, un unknown coefficients. And so the mod mathematical model we are using here is this one. So we assume that y's were measured with an errors. So that values of x are accurate, but values of y uh, were measured with some error. 
so that uh, Ys that we see in our observations, they are not real Ys, they are not actual Ys, but they are actual Ys that are functions of X, plus a random error. So each Y we are observing here is real, unknown Y, plus random error epsilon i. So in this model we say that epsilon i is a random error and theta j is an unknown parameter. So coefficients of, a, of the polynomial are unknown. So then uh, we want to choose coefficients such that the graph of this polynomial uh, is close to the points. In other words, we can say that we need to estimate the unknown parameter theta j in, in a such way to make uh, the curve, the graph of our function, to be close to the observations. So, and the question to be answered is, what do we mean saying close? So how we can measure how close the curve and the points are? How to measure the distance between the curve and the point. So the most popular way to do this is to measure this distance as a sum of squared vertical deviations of the points from the curve. So for each point you measure the vertical distance between the point and the curve and you square this distance and you then you add these squared distances for all points you have. So the function that describes uh, this, this way to measure distance is expressed with the formula you see now. So sum of squared vertical distances. Why, why vertical? Because we assume we have just assumed that only y's are measured with errors. So we assume that x's are accurate and only y's have some deviations from their real values, from their actual values due to errors, because of the errors. And so that is why we measure only vertical deviations. Uh, y squared, so I will answer this question a little bit later. So then, after this is done, we can find coefficients, we can estimate coefficients theta 1, theta 0, theta j, uh, theta m, uh, as uh, just minimizing this function. So we want to minimize the distance between the curve and the, and the points. And so parameters estimators are found by minimizing this function, by minimizing the distance between the curve and the points. So here in the last formula, theta without indexes is, uh, uh, is um, understood as a vector. So theta is a column of theta 1, theta m. So column of the dimension m. Uh, and so we are minimizing this function. So we know from calculus how to find a minimum point of a function of several arguments. So we can uh, find partial derivatives of r over theta 1, uh, theta 0, theta 1, theta 2, up to theta m, and we'll get m plus 1 equations, and we solve this system of equations, and we get uh, critical points, and then we check which of these critical points is, uh, uh, which is minimum and which is maximum point, and which is not, neither minimum nor maximum. So, uh, we use standard approach from calculus to find this uh, minimum point. So, and this method is called ordinary, ordinary least square method, OLS, or sometimes without ordinary, just a least squared method, LS method. So, this is the most popular method to to estimate coefficients, unknown coefficients of a polynomial in linear regression model. So why this, this method is the most popular? 
So, it is proved that this method, that OLS, is the best, best method when the errors have a normal distribution. As you know that, um, you know that when the distribution of observations is known, so we know the distribution up to uh, several unknown parameters, then we can apply the maximum likelihood method to estimate unknown, these unknown parameters. And here also, if we assume that the distribution law of these epsilons, of errors, is normal, then we can, we can apply the MLM, the maximum likelihood method, to estimate unknown thetas. And the OLS, the ordinary least squares method, is um, a consequence of the MLM in this case. So when we apply the maximum likelihood method for estimating unknown thetas, then what we get is the, uh, the, the OLS method. So maximum likelihood method um, is maximizing the likelihood function, as you remember. And so uh, it, it turns out that the likelihood function, function looks like this uh, sum of squares with minus sign. So uh, maximizing the likelihood function is equal to minimizing the uh, sum of squared uh, deviations. So uh, this is why uh, this method is used so frequently, because it is the optimal method when we have normally distributed observations. And we have and we have normally distributed observations very often. So that is why this method is also used very often. So then, uh, this method is also um, uh, easy in calculations, simple in calculations. So uh, OLS estimators can be found without actually solving the minimization problem. I told you that um, to minimize the function, to find uh, the minimum point of a function, you are to, to find partial derivatives, to equate them to zero and so on. Yes, this is true, but for the OLS method, this problem has already been solved uh, and has already been solved in general, not for particular polynomials, but in general. And so how it, it was solved? Um, the solution can be easily expressed uh, in form of matrices and vectors. So let's define, uh, let's, let's define the H matrix uh, in a way you see now. So the first column is, uh, consists of just ones. The second column are axes. The third column are squared axes. The fourth column are cubed axes and up to the M power. To, to x power m, then y is a column of y's and theta is the co a column of thetas. And so then theta hat, column of estimators of unknown thetas, can be found with this formula you see now. So h transposed times h power minus 1 times h transposed times y. So this means that the only operation you should know to find, an, uh, to find OLS estimators is just multiplication of matrices. So, and multiplication of matrices is just an arithmetical operation, a very simple operation that can be realized just in, in uh, any, any programming environment. So, not only in uh, you, you don't need some special, uh, some special uh, uh, algorithms, uh, some special programs for mathematical calculations, for um, uh, mathematical uh, to solve mathematical problems like Maple or I don't know MATLAB or some others. Uh, you can you can use these matrices multiplication in any programming language. So that is why this method is, is very simple. But it has uh, one important uh, problem. 
OLS estimators are not robust. So this term, robust, uh, is used in statistics to describe methods that are um, good, that are stable in case of outliers in observations. And so what, the, uh, what an outlier is, an, an outlier is a very big uh, and, uh, how to say, unpredictable error. So sometimes you, you have not standard small errors that are based on uh, the measuring method you are using and so on. But sometimes you have very big uh, unpredictable errors, like for example, drop, uh, accidental drop of a decimal point in a number that, uh, so, and, and the, in, in this case an observation is multiplied by 10 or by 100 or 1 by 1000 if there are three digits after the decimal point. So if the, this point is, is dropped, accidentally, so then we, we get an outlier in our observations. Or accidental zeros instead of real values and so on. So there are robust methods and non-robust methods. Uh, robust methods are stable in case of outliers and non-robust methods are not stable. So they show poor results when we have c c contaminated uh, observations, observations with um, plenty of outliers. So the OLS is uh, not robust. So this method uh, uh, estimates coefficients uh, in a so not so very good when when there are observation uh, when there are outliers in our observations. So so what can be done in this case? if we suspect that there are outliers or if we know that they, there are outliers in our observations, so what can we do? Uh, so the first idea is just to, to remove them manually, to analyze our observations, to find these outliers and to remove them from the observations. But if, uh, if this cannot be done for some reason, so what can, what can we do in this case? The most simple case is the situation when we even don't think about the degree of the polynomial, but we just say, let's try to describe this relationship between x and y with a line, so with the polynomial of the first degree. And so in this, in this case, the model looks like yi equal to theta 0 plus theta 1 xi plus epsilon i. And we are to estimate only two coefficients, two parameters, theta 0 and theta 1. And for this case, we have formulas that help us to do this even without uh, multiplying matrices. N not only without differentiating and solving equations, but even without multiplying matrices. So these are the formulas uh, we are using for this, uh, for, this, for this most simple case. So theta one hat and theta zero hat OLS estimators. So here we, uh, we assume that errors are normally distributed and so we are using the OLS. So OLS estimators of theta one and theta zero for this model are uh, found with these formulas you see now. 